Hello and welcome to this video. As you've already seen, I've motorized the new LEGO Technic Batman's Batmobile and I included all of the features of the original version and a few extra things. An important part of this model is or other light effects and there are two light bricks in the set, in the original set, and I also tried to include these functionalities but not with light bricks but with controllable LEDs. Also, I've used a Spike Prime Hub. You can also use a Robot Mentor Hub if you try to replicate this. Because it has six ports, so I can connect as many powered up devices as I want, or at least as many as are possible with just one hub. And it can connect to the remote. I've used a powered up script. And I will link the powered up script and a file for the backlights in the description. The page will be in German, but you will find the things that you look for if you want to see the source code or the design for the backlights. We will get to the backlights later. But let's start with the functions of this model. First of all, I wanted to include a normal light, front lights and backlights, and they're included. You can see here that there are wires that go to the edges and also for the backlights there are wires that I hit here and there and there are basically power functions LEDs not powered up LEDs because I wanted to spare one port I wanted to use one port for an extra function and front and backlights behave similarly or in the same way so I decided to use a powered up to powered power functions converter cable so that I can plug both the front and the rear lights into one port. And that way I I can control them at the same time, not independently, but I can also use another port for other functions. And these backlights were a huge task, a huge problem because they have a very compact build and it wasn't easy to fit a LED plus a one by one round plate or I think it's round plate to change the color of the light into the structure because the structure itself is very dense already. And if you want to rebuild this, you won't have to find a way to do that because I will link it in the video description, my solution for that. So that are the front and the rear lights. For the front lights, I can show that as well. It's not that complicated. I just uh, used three parts to put them the LEDs behind that. I think that you can Figure that out on your own. Next, we have the steering. I've used the normal calibration routine that I already made for my Contra Plus vehicles for the steering motor. So, first it goes to the maximum positions, then it goes to the center, and then I can use it to steer because it can detect the maximum position. And I've used a small angular motor for the steering because that's very tiny, it saves space, and space is always a bit a uh, big issue when it comes to these models. And the small angular motor contains a rotation sensor, so it can be used for steering. But if you want to rebuild this, that might be a problem because they are at the moment of making this video only available in one single set or in two if you want to count it individually, and they're in the education line, so it might be hard for you to get them. Anyways, I've also kept the light below this thing, and that's done by two more LEDs, which can be controlled individually. So, so far we've got three plugs, three devices, front and back LEDs on one port, the steering on one port and the lights below the hood in one port. 
So that are the first three parts. But we've got three more parts. And let's get to that. We've got one motor to drive the vehicle because it's a remote controlled car. And I I will show you the down uh, the underside or the, the below side. I've used a normal uh, small or medium motor for that without any rotation sensors because there wasn't much space in this area and I wanted to fit it somewhere. It's a bit uh, large so you can see it from behind if you look for that. And the color doesn't really match but I think that the size or the shape matches so I think that it's fine. Also in the back we've got the 3x3 light matrix. It's also from the spike, it's a spike essential set. And I use this light matrix because it can show different colors. So the the see-through motor, the fake engine, can light in different colors. I can control the light of the fake engine or the color of the fake engine within the program. And that's, I think, a huge plus for this program because that way I can show that a normal running engine is red because it's fire and it's it's angry and stuff like that. But when it gets faster, it will get blue. And I basically made two modes. I made a normal mode, which runs in red. It's slow, but it's uh, it's easy to steer. And there's also the mode that I call hero mode, where the engine lights blue, or where the fake engine is blue. The vehicle drives faster. The light below this hood is enabled, and this uh, will spin faster. But we will come to that. So uh, three by three matrix to change the color of the lights here. And that are two more functions. One is missing or there's one remaining one. And that's another small angular motor below this part. And it's basically used to drive the fake engine and this exhaust. They're disconnected from the drive. In the original model, when you turn the wheels, the fake engine will turn as well. But I disconnected them because I wanted to control the driving and the fake engine independently. Because in normal cars, the engine can run or move without the car driving. And I wanted to replicate that in this model. So I used an extra motor for that. Of course, when you try to re replicate this with a normal hub, you can just use one motor or you can leave them connected. And then you can leave this motor out and you wouldn't see it. So it's basically a, a question of preference. But that were the functions and I will show them as well. As I already th said, this hub runs Pybricks, so it can, it's completely independent of any smartphones or tablets or other devices. I can simply turn it on synchronize this remote, which can connect directly to the sub by Bluetooth. And now it has the calibration sequence. The motor knows the maximum positions and can get to the center. And now we're basically in the in the normal mode. We, we basically started the car, but we haven't started the motor yet. The motor doesn't run, but the lights shine. But they're, they're not bright, they're a bit dimmed. Now I can start the engine by pressing the middle button, the green button, and then the engine will make a small move forwards because of all the energy that gets transferred to the wheels. This fake engine will, will hold up or it will start fast and it will turn blue and then red. And of course it will run fast and then it will get slower over the time. So let me show you that. This mode is a bit, or the starting is a bit inspired by Fast and Furious. And now you can also see that the lights are brighter. But now we're in the normal driving mode. I can drive forwards, backwards, I can turn. The steering sometimes need a few, needs a few seconds to get to the actual positions. And I'm in the slow mode, in the normal driving mode. And you can see that the engine shines red. You can't see that very well, but I can see it and it works better 
when it's darker. But here we can see the matrix is red. But now I can get to, into the hero mode. Oh, that was turning off. So you can also turn this model off by pressing the green button again. Then it will get back to the mode where it started, but it's not not uh, the engine is not running yet. So let me start it again. And now we will have to wait for the engine to get to the normal level again. And you can activate the hero mode by pressing both red buttons at the same time. So let me do that. And now the engine shines blue, you can see that. It's faster, the vehicle drives faster, and you can also see the red light below the sword. So that's how this model works, and I think that it works pretty well. But now let's check out the program. This is the program. First we import the stuff so that we can use the sensors and the motors and so on. Then we have to initialize the hardware. We have to tell the hub which hardware it has and which port the hardware uses. In this case, the main light, the front and rear light, are defined as DC motor, as a motor, because the adapter cable be between power functions and powered up is basically a motor for the hub. But I connected lights to the adapter cable. The other stuff is pretty straightforward, I think. We've got the color light matrix and the DC motor for driving. Then we have to, we have the initial calibration and stuff like that. We connect to the remote. We have the steering calibration. Calibration. Then we will get into the main loop and into the starting mode. So we wait for a center button press. Then we have our small animation for the holding engine or for the for the engine that starts with blue color and then fades back to red. It drives forwards for 0 0.2 seconds and it has blue color for 0 0.2 seconds and then it gets back, back to red and it gets less bright. After that we are in the main loop and here we can control the car. We can drive forwards, backwards, and steer. And we can also activate the hero mode if you press both the left and the right button at the same time. Then it will change the maximum speed, so the, the speed that the car can drive, the speed of the fake engine, the color of the fake engine, the color of the remote, and the front colors, uh, or the front light below the Board. And we can, of course, turn the car off by pressing the center button, then we will get to the button. It will continue here and turn everything off. That was it for this video. Again, you can check the source code and the backlight construction in the description. I will link uh, a page where you can find it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video and bye.